I don't know what book to review today. Heard of Iron? Hello all, what's up? I hope everything is good. So today I'm going to talk about Heard of Iron by Ashley Thompson. Let's start with a plot. This is a story of Anna who was found drifting through the space with her friend Android D09 or D09, whatever. So she was found by a captain who is a woman, by the way. Uh, they don't have any memory of what happened. They don't remember anything, but that's why the crew of Outlaws became the family. But even if D09 will always have a special place in Anna's heart. Sadly, one day he'll start to glitch and there is nothing to do except fix him. So Anna is willing to do anything to fix him, even get in trouble. One day she got a crazy idea. She believes that she will fix Dionai by finding a lost ship. But for that first, she has to seal the coordinate. But unfortunately, the Iron Blood, the enemy, I mean one Iron Blood, already has them, so she has no choice than to team up with the enemy. The entire kingdom is basically after them and they want them alive or dead. They don't care. Not everything goes well, obviously, so now the entire crew is involved in that. They have to help Anna and in order to survive, the lost ship brings a lot of bad luck, but also a lot of questions. So this is a YA, definitely sci-fi story. I gave it a four stars on Goodreads, but it's actually a three and a half. I will explain why, even if it's still a good read. While reading it, I didn't know it was actually a retelling of Anastasia, you know, the Romanov's uh, Russian family. It was actually my favorite story as a child and kind of still is. But yeah, I was quite surprised. And even the name, Anna, Lost and everything, I, I feel stupid. <laughs> So I honestly had a hard time investing myself in the story, like for the first 75, 80 pages. But after that, I ate it super fast. Yeah, I ate it. I devoured it. So we're gonna follow four point of views, Anna, Dionine, Rob, and Jax. Which for me was actually good and bad at the same time. It's probably one of the reasons I needed so much time to really start enjoying the book. I don't really mind a lot of point of views, but the fact that the story was actually going super fast and all the chapters, they were super short. So we were passing from one point of view to another one super fast. And that's maybe what didn't help me to dive into the story from the beginning. But at the same time, yeah, it made a story going super fast, like a fast paced story. I think it's super hard as a writer to write so many point of views in a story. And I honestly think she did an amazing job. The author made the point of view super deep and natural and complex and fun, you know, and she really created are complex characters and maybe the short chapters with different point of views helps there. I really don't know. I'm not an expert. So let's talk about Anna actually. So Anna or Anastasia or Ananke in this story is pretty badass and kind of reckless. She really found her place in the crew of Outlaws and she loves the eyes like above the stars. And she's really like lovable, but also kind of whiny. So Dionine, her best friend, or maybe Dimitri in the real story, he's a metal, illegal metal. If I didn't know he was actually a robot, I would think he was human. He felt what a human actually feels and what a robot doesn't normally. So it was a very interesting point of view. Then we have Rob, who is a spoiled iron blood and he's hated by her mother and abused by her and everything. And he didn't find his place in his kingdom. And he's still like looking for his dad who disappeared like a while ago. And then you have Jax who is lovable, so cute. And his love story is so like cute beyond the stars. He's a Saloni pilot, by the way. So the crew of Outlander pilot of the ship 
When going through the book, I felt like we got less and less of his point of views. I really don't know why, because I really liked him and I don't see a reason why. But yeah, I really liked him. I don't have much to say about him, but I did really enjoy his character. Oh, also, he has a power. He can see the future, everyone's faith. So the relationships were amazing in this book. So I read some reviews on the internet and I know that a lot of people found the relationship between Anna's and D, I mean Dionite, kind of weird or even gross. I really didn't mind it because I knew from the beginning that it was a book. <laughs> so I really didn't mind it. Let's be honest, I was kind of surprised at the beginning because it's not really platonic between them, but it was okay. And honestly, you can see robots and humans sleeping together in movies, so why not in a book? And they were not actually sleeping together, it's just me explaining the actual thing. So yeah, it really didn't shock me, and they're not like together together, you know, they're robot and human, so they cannot be together together, but they are together and together in some way, if you understand me. <laughs> As I said, the relationships were amazing, but super interesting and super diverse, if I can say like different. For instance, the captain of the ship, so Anna's mother kind of thing, is a lesbian and she's married to a woman. And also Jax and Rob's relationship was never like really written or stated in the book but I felt like they were gay and they were like super cute together they were like joking all the time and teasing each other all the time and I really loved reading about it what I really liked in this book is that it doesn't matter where you're from what's the color of your skin or whom you're with because all that matters is trust and the family you're creating you're building I felt like the book really focused on what the family means, what loving a family means, and it's not all about blood, because there are people on her that don't have a family, I mean a blood-related family, but they still have friends, very good friends. That's their own family. They are creating one, and that's actually what the book is about. At the end, blood is just blood. I know it might be super important for some people, it's not that important for me. It's not because we don't share any DNA thing that I wouldn't do everything to help you. I really feel that it's important to say that because some people don't have family, they didn't get the chance to know them or anything, so blood is not just blood, you can create your own family. I also would like to add a warning. We talk about suicide, death, abuse, sexual abuse and everything, so this book might not be for everyone, even if it's a YA. So the book was full of incredible ideas, like all the people were not right, some people were queer, some people had like magic in them, so people were like just super funny. <laughs> I love the space pirate ship and everything, so I found the book pretty amazing. Yes. Uh, the world was super amazing, super described, I felt like it was twist after twist, so I was never bored uh, while reading it, except for the 81st pages, but we're gonna forget about these pages. The crew was for me the strongest part of the book. I wanted to be a part of that crew, and I also wanted to read more about them. I also love the Metal Rebellion, even if it's absolutely not something new or innovative. I really love that in this book. And I love the fact that they've been hyped, so we took their free will in some way. And they weren't always bad, like some were medics even before they've been hyped. So to summarize the book, it is basically Anastasia's retelling in space with a lot of diversity and twists. That's a lot of... <laughs> it's a fast-paced book full of adventures, uh, super funny, that will have you flipping the pages. It was so action-packed, actually. So I really loved the plot, I really loved the characters, I fell in love with the crew, I loved Dio9, I love Anna, I loved the diversity of it, I loved the writing, I loved everything except for the 81st pages. 
but it doesn't really matter because I enjoy the end. And let's be honest, the fact that this is a retelling, you already kind of know what's gonna happen, so it's predictable, but I really didn't mind it. So 3.5, I think it's pretty good for a book. Okay, it's not a four or five, but I really did enjoy it. I just didn't give it a five stars or four stars because of the first pages and because I needed to get used to the to the writing to the short chapters and to the point of views and yeah it just took me some time to dive in but I really enjoyed it and I really recommend it maybe not to everyone but yeah it's a good sci-fi book so that's all I have to say for Heart of Iron by Ashley Poston so let me know in the comment if you're planning on reading it or if you want to share your thoughts you're more than welcome thank you for watching walls Take care. See you soon. Bye.